Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello, and welcome to the new Saturday series. I teased this one a little bit at the very end of Donkey Kong. I don't know if those of you who are keen observers listening to the end board, you might have noticed that the song that I played there was this song. So going forward, I couldn't get enough of Pikmin 2 or Pikmin in general. I finished the third game not long ago, so I wanted to play Pikmin 2. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. Hopefully you can all enjoy a little bit of a cutscene. Keeping in mind that this is the Wii port of the GameCube release of Pikmin 2. It was a it was considered an upgraded version because of it having like Wii controls. Initially, like I said, this game was on the on the GameCube. So this is the sequel to Pikmin. We are playing these in reverse order, as you do sometimes. And this time around, our protagonist will actually be Captain Olimar. As he returns to Hokutate from repairing the dolphin, that's the ship he's got there. His ship. He went back to post-apocalyptic Earth, gathered up all these supplies, and is now able to show and reap the rewards with the president of Hokutate Freight. Except for one thing. Louis, if we remember, with his insatiable appetite, he ate an entire buttload of pick pick carrots and it has sent the company into bankruptcy i declare bankruptcy so instead they've decided to sell off some assets in this case it was the dolphin i apparently it does not just belong to olimar but we are now officially 10,000 Pikmin dollars in debt. Sounds like going to college. Get used to that sound. You're going to be hearing that a lot. This is one of the main gimmicks of this game, or I guess you could say secondary characters. But as we quickly learn, a bottle cap on top of a soda, an adult soda, is worth an entire year's salary on Hokutate? Hmm. So now, Louis is tasked with helping Olimar repay this debt, although it's entirely his fault. Captain Olimar is the only one who's actually pulling his weight here. Unfortunately for him, he has to drag along the useless Louie with him. So back to Earth it is to scavenge and take more supplies. It's a nice shot of Earth. You can see that's a little different. But we're going to first land in the Valley of Repose. This is going to be our first destination. Aboard this. Very ill-equipped ship. Bye. See ya, bye. And Louis is dead forever. And that's the game. Thankfully, there's enough juice in this ship to let us land safely. <laughs> well, maybe not for Captain Olimar. But here we go. I don't know what to call this, like the, I'm just gonna call it the, uh, the radar. And the radar is basically going to 
essentially kind of be our guide. This is our Navi if you've played Ocarina of Time to tell us about all kinds of cool things. I also love how the text flies in. It's very good. So Louis is mission. Missing. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Captain Olimar, piloted by Captain Obvious. All right. Okay, so he could be flouting protocols. We've seen in Pikmin 3, he was not very responsive and uh, was very willing to steal our things. Well, we don't have to find Louis. Maybe we should. It's the duty of a captain. But first, this is our introduction to Pikmin in this game. The other games, they did a little bit better of a job in making it kind of part of the world building, the lore. And this one, they're just kind of like, hey, they are here. Let's get into it. We don't have time to mess around. That's what you did back in the early 2000s. You just kind of jumped right in. So here we go. Hopefully my Wiimote is going to cooperate. So we're going to use our whistle to whistle these Pikmin away. Ooh, that'd be cool. And now they are under our control of slavery, or I mean, friendship. Okay. That's right. So I don't know how much time is spent in between game one and two, but these Pikmin, unlike Goldfish, quite the memory. So we do have motion controls, which is going to be awesome. By awesome, I mean not as awesome as not having them. So instead, we're going to throw them on this bull borb and murder it right away. Ah, the good old days of murdering the local fauna. And in certain cases, I don't know if it's like fauna or flora because they're kind of both. So who knows? Also, I apologize for anybody that's done a Let's Play of this game and has attempted to give a voice to the radar. It's probably incredibly annoying. I'm not going to do that. But thankfully, the radar has found Louie. And you're able to switch back and forth in the similar vein of you doing that with Charlie, Brittany, and Al. So we will have two captains to control. But unfortunately, with our Pikmin, we can't get over this paper bag. So instead, we'll switch to Louis. He's like, oh. I love his imprint in the snow. That's very nice. He might, he might not be injured, but he probably has hurt feelings. That's right. So we're going to need to sync up. And thankfully, the ship will navigate for us. So let's go ahead and do exactly what the ship says. Talk about the terrain. So here you go. Here's the map. As you can see, we're pretty close by. There's something suspicious, though. Right in the middle. Looks like the Valley of Repose needs to wash its face because it's got a pimple. But yes, very nice. It, there is a uh, firm outline of Louie in the snow. I do like that a lot. And as you can see, Louie's counter around him with his whistle. It's also a little different. It's blue. He's more of a train whistle. I enjoy that. And that's not the only whistle here in this game. This is the first two. So here we go. This is the onion from Pikmin 2, similar to Pikmin 1, although this one's a little stylized. It has kind of a weird tribal tattoo around it. It got a little wild in its college years, so we won't talk about that too much, but. It will poop out a Pikmin pellet for us, or just the Pikmin, the pellets are right behind it. Oh! I do enjoy Louie and his VeggieTale eyes. So here we go, it's one seed. I'm gonna spread our seed and pluck it. Here we go. Boom. Our very first Pikmin. Oh, hmm. That's kind of how I react to most stimuli in life. Hmm. Okay. So far, so good. It's a lot of exposition. I apologize for that, but you know, tutorials, tutorials. It is staring at us. So there you go. You can press down on the D-pad and you can issue some objectives. I will probably immediately forget that. And you can disband your squad with C. Interesting. <laughs> the radar throwing some shade. But there we go. We have our very own Pikmin. Louis is not familiar with Pikmin, obviously. He was not there for Pikmin 1. 
And so now is rightfully terrified. <laughs> it's very good. Okay. So first objective. It said that we can press down the D-pad. And this is basically like your C-stick in the... Uh, in the first Pikmin, or if you played Pikmin 2. That. So that's kind of where we're at. We can switch back to Olimar. As you can see, we're not going to be able to actually get over this fence for now, this barrier. As we are rudely interrupted by cutscene, we will now learn that carrying a pellet of the right color by the right Pikmin will get you double the reward. Very nice. So there you go. We are pros about pick pick pellets, but that's all right. It's the Mothership. One of my favorite albums, all right. So once again, same rules apply. Mechanically, this game is very similar to Pikmin 3. The difference being obviously that that game has a measurable quality of life things to it that this one will not have, obviously. But hey, as you've seen, or as you should be able to tell by now, this game looks a little bit better. Hmm. We're going to be playing an enhanced version of this game. It is the Wii control version of the game, so we've got that going for us. I did not mean to do that. I'm going to have to get used to these controls. It's been quite a while since I've played a Pikmin game, let alone one that uses Wii controls. But thankfully, what the Pikmin will do after going and obtaining a pellet, they will come right back to you in most cases. So we're trying to get 15 Pikmin here. In doing so, that will allow us to knock down that heinous paper bag. I don't know how to change the camera at all. That's zooming in, that's zooming out a little bit. Okay, I don't know how to... There it is. Now we're using our brain. Okay, it has been a hot minute. This game is very fun, though. Hopefully you all enjoy it. I enjoy it. So that should be enough. We have 16 on the squad, and we needed 15 total. There's an item there. So I'm a believer that we're probably going to want to grab this. There's a lot of product placement in this game. I don't know how they pulled that off. Nintendo doesn't want people infringing on their IPs, but they don't mind sharing some others. So there we go. One of many treasures, like you viewers. You're treasures to me. So now we'll learn about cameras. Which would have been nice. I guess I got a little ahead of myself, which never happens. So now we can send the Pikmin. If it would let me do it. There we go. I'd like to swarm this. It's not like they're saying, let me at him, let me at him. That's right, Pikmin. Do my bidding. Do not like this angle at all. There we go. Much better. So we'll let them slowly dig up this battery. As a viewer pointed out in Pikmin 3, I don't know if, um... Oh, looks so like we won't be digging that up for now. We'll come back. We'll, f we'll feel a little more energized once we meet back up with Captain Olimar. But first, I command you to knock down that wall. So all but one will do the trick. And there you have it. Unification. Bringing cultures back together. All right. So yes, it has been a troublesome start to the trip, but rest assured, through Olimar and Louie, all things are possible. So there you go. You can split up, obviously, in the same way that I believe if you have everybody all together, I think you can cycle through... Uh, I don't remember how we switch. I don't know how we split. Okay, it's gonna be a minute. I'll figure this out eventually, but okay, there you go. So you can just drop the squad. You can just drop a nice big squad. First things first, though, we need to take this bull board back to... Let's give a couple more to you guys. You can hurry it up. We need them to take that bull board back. I don't think there were any ways to grab more pellets. Don't know what is this way. 
Oh, this will be fun. Look, viewers, it's a slide. Whee! That was fun. Now get back to work. All right, so as we enjoy Capitalism Simulator, I think we should be able to knock... I don't know if we can knock this wall down. This looks like this probably has 15-ish. But in the meantime... Oh, 35. What? Well, we're not going that way. That's fine. Who needs them? But our Pikmin will very quickly... <sighs> Guys, I said very quickly... Carry this dead Bulwark Corpse back, and you get multiple things in the future from carrying back enemies. In this case, we're just getting Pikmin. But, eventually, cash money. So there we go. All right. So that's, I think, as big of a squad as we can get right now. And I did a great job of abandoning them over here. So I have to backtrack, which is so smart. Really gonna hit my PB playing at this rate. It's okay. But now, we, we can hit the A button a ton. I'm gonna give myself carpal tunnel playing this game. We have exactly enough to carry this battery. Now, in similar fashion to Pikmin 3, what is great that they do in this game is all the treasures. There's many treasures. They all have fun, quirky names. The downside, though, is it takes forever sometimes to get them back to your ship. But as you can see, we have three landing zones. So we at least are going to be getting red Pikmin in this game. Will there be other colors of Pikmin? I don't know. You'll have to watch and find out. Boom, boom. Tension spoilers. But yes, this is going to take a hot minute. Unfortunately, there's not really a ton you can do. You just got to kind of wait it out. Your Pikmin can only slave so fast. So instead, we will run around in circles. Getting our steps in. Got to make sure that we're hitting our daily goals. But yeah, there's not really a whole lot you can do. This first day is not timed, as you can see. Normally, there's a timer way up here. And you've got so many Pikmin hours before you have to get the heck out of there. But here we go. It's our first treasure. The Courage Reactor. Very nice. And a word from our sponsor. Here we go. So yes, this is our first treasure. And the radar will... Essentially, name it all the goofy fun things. And always on the pulse of pop culture for those hit products. Definitely very talented. So far, so good. And you're going to learn about how you can't stay here overnight because you'll get the chomp. So that's it for the day. We'll whistle back nothing, because the Pikmin have gone back to the Onion. And that just about does it. Can't really tell if Louie's... ...porthole there is covered or not. Who knows. But the bull borb that we murdered has come back to life as we... ...jettison into the skies into... ...low Earth orbit. And, of course, today's report. This is where you learn about how many Pikmin you... ...that survived. You can see what sort of treasure you acquired. We're trying to hit that 10,000 mark. Now, that's not essentially 100%ing the game. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not yet. I haven't quite decided. But... ...in the meantime, you can see how many Pikmin you propagated. You'll see how many you lost as well. If you hit the Z button, it'll give you a breakdown of... The various ways that they can sadly get murdered. That last thing looks a little interesting. I wonder what that's about. Hmm. We'll have to find out. But for now, mail. Day one from the president. You found your first bit of treasure. 
Or maybe I should give him a- Tomorrow, you found your first bit of treasure. Fine work. Our future depends on your efforts, so check your treasure hoard regularly. I'll check in often. Keep up the pace. I don't love doing that, but maybe I will just for you guys. We can save. And move on with our lives. Okay. So that was a successful day one. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been Dean Mike. This has been Pikmin 2. And I'll see you next time. Bye.